Hi, I'm Greg with Task Lighting. We're now going to show you how to install your LED tape light system with the use of the Micro Waterproof LED Vivid Tape Light. And in this installation, we'll also show you how to use an aluminum profile in areas where the light might be seen. First, you're going to want to drill all of your holes and then route your wire and run it back to the location where your power supply and receiver will be located. You may want to have someone assist you in helping to route the wire. Next, you'll want to measure and cut all of your tape light to the correct size based on the area or location that it will be applied to. Your roll of light comes with a factory female barrel connector end. You'll want to cut this off so that you can make the connection to your strip with your 8mm connector. Make sure you cut your tape light down the center of the cut line. Apply the adhesive tab that comes included with the 8mm connector to help hold it in place during installation. Now you want to prep your 8mm connector by backing out the four screws so they're just proud of the surface of the connector. This will allow you to easily insert your connection wire and tape light into the connector. Peel the adhesive backing back about half of an inch and fold the protective paper back to keep it out of the way. You can then insert it into the connector and tighten the two screws on the tape connection side. You'll want to now clean your surface making sure there's no dust, oil, or grease and then use your adhesive promoter wipe to make sure that you have a secure bond to the surface. Allow your adhesive promoter to dry for about 90 seconds. Take the wire that you routed earlier, strip the ends back, and make sure that you twist the ends to prevent fraying and crossover of polarity. Ensure that the polarity on your strip is correct, making sure that you put the red wire to the 12 volt DC side and the black wire to the GND side. Insert the wire into the connector, and then tighten down the two screws. Now remove the adhesive tab off the back of the connector and then remove the film off of the back of the LED tape light and affix it in position. We decided to install the LED tape light to the back of the light rail molding in this installation to avoid the dot 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 on your countertop reflection. Next we're going to show you how we're going to use an aluminum profile in an area where the tape light might be seen because it's up higher. You're going to want to measure and cut your aluminum profile to size based on the measurements you took earlier. You'll now want to cut your lens to the appropriate size with a pair of sharp scissors. Clean out the aluminum profile of any dust from the saw as well as cleaning out the lens before installing your LED tape light. Ensure that you cut your strip to the correct length, attach your connector, and install it into your aluminum profile. In this installation, we chose to use the double-sided adhesive tape to affix our LED profile in place to the bottom of the cabinet. We also have mounting clips available for this installation. Peel the adhesive backing off of the aluminum channel, prep your wire, twist the ends to ensure that none are frayed, make sure you select the correct polarity end and insert the wire into your connector that's inside of the profile. Tighten the two screws down and affix your profile in place. The hole we drilled earlier will now be hidden when we apply our lens to the bottom of the profile. This ensures a clean, professional installation. Make sure you remove the protective film from the lens and that portion of our installation is complete. You'll now follow the same steps for other areas where you'll install lighting. For example, if you have an open shelf cabinet, you would follow the same steps whether you're using just tape light or if you're using an aluminum channel in addition to your tape light.
Sometimes interior cabinets, such as pantries that are very deep, can be dark. We're going to now show you how to use a simple sensor switch and add some of the LED tape light to give you a nice bright cabinet interior when you open your door. You'll want to drill a hole to pass the wire for your sensor through. You'll want to measure and cut your strip for one side that will go down the back of the face frame. Make your connection as you did previously by loosening the screws in the connector, inserting your LED tape light, tightening the appropriate screws, making the connection to the wire in your cabinet, and then affixing it in place. To pair each receiver, you first want to start by clearing the receiver's memory. You do that by pressing and holding the learning button for four to six seconds until you see the lights blink or flash. We're going to do that with each receiver. Now the memory's been cleared on these and they're ready to accept pairing from the controller. The battery in the controller has a clear film behind it that you want to remove prior to pairing. You'll know that you have a good connection when you see the little green light light up when you push any of the buttons on your controller. Let's now run through the pairing process. It's quite simple. Each receiver has a learning button that you pressed earlier in order to clear the memory. You're gonna now use that same button to learn to your controller, simply by pressing and releasing the learning button, then immediately afterwards pressing and releasing the zone button you want it paired to. In this case, we paired this receiver to zone number one. Next, we're going to pair the re second receiver by utilizing the same steps. Press and release the learning key, press and release the zone button. You'll notice that each time you do this, the lights will flash, letting you know that they're paired. Finally, we're going to press and release the Quattro WR240 and pair that to zone number three. Now that our lights are all paired to each zone, we can increase the brightness and decrease the brightness by dimming them up and down using the control buttons. But let's say we wanted all of these lights, besides being controlled independently, to be controlled as a group. That's very simple too. Now we're going to utilize only the Zone 4 button and each of our learning buttons on the receivers. So we're going to go in the same sequence as we did before. The first receiver we're going to press and release and then immediately hit Zone 4. Same with the second and same with the third. Now, if we push our off button on zone four, the lights go off. If we press the on button, the lights go on. If we press and hold, the lights will dim down. And if we press and hold zone four, the lights will go to full brightness. We also now had paired it to the first three zones. So zone number one, if we hit off, we can turn just the tape light off. Zone two will turn just the puck light that's paired to it off. And zone three, we'll turn off the WR240 receiver that we had paired to this puck light. So you can control each of these independently, dimming them up and down to your desired level, or you can control them all together using Zone 4 as a master.